Um, so all I'm going to do is just move the move the sand aside. You'll see as I, I had something growing here last year. I think there's some, probably some soil here. I'm just moving the sand aside. Notice how once I get down a couple inches, the sand is wet, right? So you'd think this would dry it. Hey, it's Greg here at MaritimeGardening.com and I'm out here doing a little bit of work in my herb garden. This is my driveway. <clears throat> this is the south side of my house. South is that way where you are. And uh, I grow herbs here. It's a very simple uh, sort of garden. This was a part of my driveway for those that haven't seen videos on this before. And I always had weeds growing here in my driveway. So what I did was I made holes in the gravel, put some soil in the hole, like you know, about the size of a flower pot basically. I made holes in the gravel, put some soil in the hole, put some herbs in the soil, perennial herbs, and then covered the whole thing with sand so I wouldn't get more weeds. And uh, I've had herbs growing, perennial herbs growing here ever since. That was probably, uh, I can't remember exactly, maybe 2015, 2014, 2015. So all the herbs along this garden, I'll, I'll pick the camera up and show you a little bit more, but all the herbs growing along here have been growing since then, with the exception of a couple. So I mean, this, this oregano, for instance, is probably year three or year four, something like that. So this would have been just one. If I bought it, it would have been uh, a transplant like this. Uh, one of them anyway. I think the other one I got from a friend. Uh, so this side, right? And I just stuck it in the ground and <laughs> that's it, right? I haven't really done, you know, people will talk about the, the that this herb needs this soil and this herb needs that soil. And, and certain herbs, I'm sure, are very fussy uh, in, in what they need. But uh, the things I'm growing here, they're basically weeds that taste good. I've got oregano, savory, uh, sage, um, Regular savory sage and rosemary, and I just bought some tarragon and uh, thyme. But the purpose of this video was to talk. I was just people are going to ask me questions, so I thought I'd just blow through that. Uh, purpose of this video is to talk about an interesting result I got with uh, a bit of an experiment I did this year with uh, with rosemary. So here I've got uh, got a rosemary plant here, and I got a rosemary plant here. And they're both the same variety, and this is the bar, I think barbecue variety. And uh, rosemary is a zone eight perennial, um, maybe zone seven, but usually zone eight. It's, and I'm in zone six, so it's a it's a it's a perennial herb that really isn't equipped to handle the winter and the extremes of temperature where I am. And so the common advice with rosemary, if you're going to try to keep it year after year is to grow it in a pot and just bring the pot inside in the winter and move the pot outside in the summer. And lots of people do that and that works great. Um, for me, I, aside from just not being interested in doing that, it was a number, for a number of reasons, I'll get to that in a minute, um, but also I, the main reason is I just do not have a space in my house with a window where I can put a pot like that for the winter. I used to, and I used to live in a, a previous house I lived in, there was an ideal window in the laundry room where I could put things like that. But I really don't have them. I mean, this is the south side of my house. There's only one window on the south side of my house. And really in the winter, it's, you only get decent light in this, on the south side of the house in this, this part of the world. Um, there's only one window and it's over my dining room table where we eat every day. And uh, it, just, it, would, it just would not float <laughs> with Mrs. Maritime Gardening. <laughs> Um, nor do I want to. I mean, it's not, it's not all her. I just, it's just not a place I want to have some sort of setup, right? Um, and, and none of the other windows in the house, they're all in like bedrooms and there's just no place to put it really, um, given, the, you know, where we are in life and so on and so forth. It just doesn't work for us. Um, but another reason to want to try to keep it in the ground is because, you know, the roots get established in the ground and like like these other plants I've got, right? These other perennials, right? The the roots are well established in the ground, and I really don't do much. I might put some compost tea on this once a year. I didn't even do it this year, and everything's doing great. Um, the roots get really well established. They get deep into the ground. They go all over the place, and the plant can find what it needs to to get really good growth. I mean, it's fairly early in the year, and uh, in another maybe two or three weeks, my garlic will have scapes, and I'll be making pesto with this stuff, right? I almost use all of it to use up the garlic scapes and then it grows back uh, later in the year. Um, so this fall I 
became intrigued with an idea I had for overwintering these outside. So this one I just planted. Initially, I had a rosemary here and a rosemary right here, okay? And this uh, wooden structure you see off to the side, this is a garbage box. Uh, where I live, there's wild animals everywhere and you, you, you have to keep your garbage in a box or it'll get eaten. <laughs> and even once in a while, uh, if you're unlucky, uh, a bear will come along and just toss one of these things over. It's happened to us. Just tip the box over and tear it apart and throw it halfway across your lawn and eat all your trash anyway. But anyway, you keep it in a box. Um, so this way is south. This way is west. This way is east. Now, I had a rosemary here, and I had one right here, and I put a window over this, facing south. There was a window here, and I tried to stop. I did a kind of lousy job. I, I didn't put a proper insulative box over this. I just got a window out of somebody's trash, jammed it in here, leaned it against the house, and stuffed some stuff in the sides. And this rosemary survived the winter. And that one, the one that was over there, this is parsley there right now. But the rosemary that was there did not survive the winter. Um, even though it's a zone six. When you've got a south facing slope, you've got some, you know, the sun rises in the southeast and sets in the southwest all winter long. So assuming you get a, a reasonable number of sunny days and some sort of microclimate uh, set up around your rosemary, there should be enough heat going on there to keep to, to keep it warm enough to not die. That was my theory anyway. One of them lived and one of them didn't. The difference between the one that lived and the one that died was that um, when you see the sun going down at the end of the day, this one would get almost the whole sun. This here would be, because it's next to this thing, that's west over there, it really wouldn't get the setting sun, right? So basically this one got the full sun in the winter, whereas this one did not get the full sun. At some point in the afternoon it would be shady here. So this one gets just a little bit more heat and sun in the winter than this one. And it survived, right? So from that experiment I, I took away that if I want something that needs a bit of heat, you know, if I need to create a microclimate in the garden I can't go really any further than here. So I, and I'll just put parsley here right in, in the summer and just use that it's more of an annual so I bought this new um, new rosemary and put it here and this coming fall I'll put a little plastic box type thing over this uh, to affect a, a, a good microclimate and hopefully these will survive the winter but the reason I'm talking about this is because the reason you'd want to do this is this was just plant, transplanted recently. It's the same variety of, of rosemary. And this one was growing here last year. And this one's shorter because I cut it short. Or I cut it down to just maybe two inches high before the winter last year, right? Whereas this one is the way it came. But I'll bring the camera in in a second, but this one is nowhere near as, as healthy looking. This one's got some black spots. It's a lighter color. It just doesn't look very happy. Whereas this one, even though it's smaller, it's just started growing, right? We're just getting into the warmer months right now. We'll see how the summer goes, but I predict that at the end of the summer, that's been when I harvest this stuff, uh, this one will be bigger and stronger and lusher looking than this one. Because think about this one was in a box like this a couple weeks ago. Little tiny root base, right? Whereas this one has been growing in this soil for over a year, right? So I imagine it's got its, its roots down deep and all over the place down there, right? So it would just be so much better at getting the nutrients it needs, getting the water it needs, getting all the things it sort of needs to, to survive the winter. So I expect great things from this. And it already looks nicer and healthier. Let me bring the camera here and show you. Right, so let me get you in close and show you the difference between these two oregano, or not oregano, sorry, um, rosemary. So I'm going to zoom into the one I just planted. It looks nice. Right, so that's a transplanted rosemary that I just bought, the barbecue variety. I, I'm not partial to that variety, that's just the only kind of, tra that's the problem with transplants, there's only one kind they sell. So that's the kind they sell here and that's at the garden center. You think there's lots of different kinds of rosemary, I'm sure there's better kinds of rosemary, but um, 
you know, I, I planted it from a transplant, that's all I got. So that's what I'm going with. Um, now look over here. I can get you a little closer. This one here, so it's the same variety. I don't know if you can tell the difference in the color, right? Um, number one, it, it's bushier because, you know, I cut it down last, last fall, but it's greener. Let's see if I can bring a, let's try to you know, retain a mental image of this in your mind. Now I'm going to go back to the other one. See the difference? This isn't as deep, this one's not as deep a green. Right? Whoops. Let's go back. See how this, that's a nice, deep, rich, healthy looking green. And yes, I, I mean, I, I, tr I can't find it. This one was just transplanted a couple weeks ago. Um, so it's not necessarily a fair competition. Um, but th again, I, I think the one that was here the previous year is just, you know, it's got like what, what you might call a running start, <laughs> right? Because um, it's got already got its roots fully established in there. And assuming I can, you know, continue to develop uh, microclimates that allow them to overwinter. Remember, if it requires a zone 8 winter, um, and I'm in zone 6, um, I think it's probably only possible against the south facing wall because you've got, you know, the, the, the proper, the quality of the sand to be like a bit of a heat sink, right? Sand absorbs heat because it's rocks. And because it's against my house, it's got that insulated wall there, and the sun can sort of bounce off that, right? So, I mean, you've got a sort of special set of circumstances here. But it's uh, so much easier, in my opinion, to just erect a bit of a microclimate over this for the winter as opposed to digging them up, putting them in a pot and finding them a window. And I'm sure there's people that do that and that's fine. The whole point of, of my talking about this is just, just to explain that you don't have to do that. You don't, you know, if you're just trying to get something that's maybe a zone, or maybe two, um, warmer than where you are, may be possible to get it to overwinter. Certainly one of these I was able to um, to make that happen. Um, the other thing I thought I'd show you is just planting one of these things, how I, how I you know, uh, do that given that I've got uh, sand here. So let me plant one of these things. Alright, so I got some French tarragon here. This is a uh, hardy from zone 3 to 7 it says. So um, hopefully it'll survive the winter. <laughs> Certainly a bit in the zone. I got a uh, oregano volunteer coming up here so I'll put him off to the side. Um, so all I'm going to do is just move the move the sand aside. You'll see as I, I had something growing here last year. I think there's some, probably some soil here. I'm just moving the sand aside. Notice how once I get down a couple inches, the sand is wet, right? So you'd think this would dry out, and I don't really quite understand the function of it, but it's it's behaving like rocks. If you ever tip a rock up, you'll notice that it's wet underneath the rock, and uh, this is wet. So I mean this. I don't water this garden at all during the growing. I haven't watered this once this year and I won't I will not water this at all. I never water it. <laughs> the whole garden does just fine. Uh, again, these are perennials and they get deep roots. So um, you know they uh, they can find water, I guess. Okay, so now I'm starting to get into the actual see how this is like black stuff? This would have been a place I had something growing before. Um, so you know just move that up a bit. Yeah, some of the sand's getting mixed in there, but I, I'm confident the plant will just be able to find its find its way, so to speak. Can I get this thing out without messing it up too bad? Oh, all right. Yep. Oh, okay. Made a fine mess of that root ball, but anyway. Okay, so I'll try to get this stuff around here. Try to get the soil around it. We'll check in with this later in the season, but you know, I'm sure it'll be fine. Again, if you see the plant, um, you know, seeming to not perform well, you just just make some. You could fertilize it if you've got fertilizer. I like to use compost tea because I can get it for free. <laughs> right, just put some manure, or some grass clippings in a bucket with some water, and let it sit like that for a week, and it'll turn all brown and smell bad. And you pour that around your plant, and it'll do fine. So it's kind of like a reverse flower pot, <laughs> right? Anyway, that's planted. I'm planting these today because it's supposed to be 
um, rainy for the next couple days. So it's an ideal. I'm not even going to bother watering. It's supposed to rain tonight. It's going to rain, heavy rain tomorrow and rain the next day. So uh, for me, that's the time to put things in the ground or move plants or whatever because you're, you're just working with, you're working with, uh, you're, you know, you're, you're going with the flow of things, right? Whenever there's a big rain coming, I, uh, I try to get out in my garden. I stay, I stay out quite late and I move things around and do as much as I can to take advantage of uh, not having to nurse the plant around. Tomorrow it's going to be overcast and rainy all day. Any plant I move isn't going to really be stressed or, su or is going to suffer from the move too much. It'll have a couple days for the roots to, um, you know, find their way into the soil and adapt to the, the new situation before the sun comes back. It's a, I think it's a, it's a Thursday as I record this today and we're not supposed to get real, a real sunny day until Sunday, I think, right? So that's ideal for moving plants around. It's actually starting to rain a little bit right now, so I'm going to wrap this up. An interesting thing to note here, as I was working in this garden and just digging in the soil and planting those herbs, I noticed how much heat there was in the ground beneath the surface. So putting my hand on the sand here, it doesn't feel warm. Now right now, it's, it's overcast. It's around 7.30 p.m. Um, it looks like it's going to rain. There's not a lot of sun. The uh, ambient temperature in the air, according to this thermometer, which has been outside all day um, in the shade, I don't think there's no direct sun right now. It says that it's about um, 10 degrees uh, Celsius, just just over 10 degrees Celsius. Um, if you're uh, in, uh, I guess if you're in the United States, you'd have to convert that to uh, Fahrenheit. <laughs> so it's about 10 degrees Celsius. Um, no, yeah, it's uh, maybe maybe 11 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to just move this back a bit. I can feel heat here. So I'm just going to put the thermometer in there, move this back. Just wait a minute and see if it's if it's uh, I've gained any heat since then. Because I noticed just sticking my hands in, I can I can feel like once you get down about four inches. It's actually warmer than the air, almost like when you go swimming in a lake when it, in the evening the lake is warmer than the air. So uh, remember this has been um, in the sun all day, just uh, baking in the heat sort of thing. It was a sunny day today even though the sun's completely gone. So I don't know, I think that's been about a minute. Let's have a look and see what we got here. Should have moved by now I assume. So yeah going down quickly but it's, it's gone up to about 15 in just in that short amount of time so I don't know if you can see that at all and it's going down really fast <laughs> so it's a pretty pretty reactive uh, thermometer but this had gone up to 15 from 11 and in, in just a you know about a, less than a minute I think that was if I put my thumb on this I can make it go up pretty quick yeah so the whole point is that the sand has a way of attracting and holding heat to itself because in a sense it's like one big uh, porous rock. It would be one way of looking at what sand is when you use it as a mulch. It's like I've, covered, I've covered this entire bed with a large porous rock. Um, and like rocks it, it retains moisture. If we go down we can see that it's, it's damp. It's retained the moisture. right? It's holding the heat like a rock. Right? The only thing it's really not doing is adding much uh, nutrient value to uh, the soil. I'm sure it's uh, got some minerals in it, but there's no nutrients in there at all. Uh, but you just solve that by putting a compost tea or, or what have you, right? Uh, in, you know, whenever you, I don't know, these plants don't seem to need it that much, but if, if, if they looked like they were suffering or if they didn't look healthy or whatever, that would be my first move. Uh, otherwise it seems to take care of itself. Also when I dig in here I always find, believe it or not, despite the fact that this is covered in sand, uh, when I dig in here to plant, um, like when I was planting those, um, the thyme and the um, tarragon, uh, there's worms in the ground. <laughs> Underneath this sand, there's worms in there, right? Because it, it, even though this is a driveway, this is all gravel here, you go down about three inches and it's all clay and soil, right? It's not very good soil here, it's just hard, rocky clay sort of stuff. Um, but still, there seems to be worms uh, doing their thing in there. Because when, if I grabbed this whole oregano plant right here and pulled it out of the ground, there'd be worms in the roots. <laughs> and the odd time when I pulled a, 
a weed out of my driveway. There's usually worms in the roots. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think I've prattled on enough about this uh, strange herb garden I have in my driveway, but uh, surprisingly, I, I think this is counterintuitive to a, a boy, the way a lot of people think about gardening, but to a large extent, herbs are weeds. Weeds like to grow in your driveway, so herbs will grow in your driveway, and if you put sand down, it'll add the advantage of, of retaining the moisture, uh, preventing weeds to a large extent. I might spend five minutes a year weeding this garden. It's about, it's two feet from front to back, and from left to right, I'd say it's about six, 16 feet this way, right? What would that be in meters? Four meters, give or take. One more thing, uh, just to speak again to the uh, property of herbs, a lot of herbs uh, anyway, that don't seem to need much in the way of good soil. Um, this was, this is uh, winter savory that's self-seeded. There's a winter savory plant uh, over there. Not this one, but the next one up. And the seed blew and landed in my gravel here. And now, you know, we got like an eight inch high winter savory plant just growing in the driveway. <laughs> I imagine if I scattered seeds, there's, there's more than one. There's one right here. There's one over here. There's one right here. That's all winter savory. <laughs> I think there's one right there too. That's um, sorrel, but there's a winter savory right there. So that's where we are with the, uh, the herb garden. Uh, you know, hopefully I can get these to survive the winter and hopefully, uh, you know, I'm not trying to advocate that everyone grows herbs in their driveway in the gravel, <laughs> but I thought it would be neat to just show you what I do here, show you uh, planting one of these things and, and the general process I use. Uh, I found it to work really well uh, for the kinds of perennials I grow here. Um, you know, if you want, if you're trying to grow something that needs really good soil, like a basil, and I've tried basil here, and I've tried some things like that. I've got really good heat here because it's self-facing, and the gravel heats up, and that sort of stuff. Um, but again, given my my microclimate here and that sort of stuff, I don't get to kind of heat someone in a, an actual hot place we get. This is one of the warmer places, um, but still, because the soil here isn't fantastic at all, right? It's just <laughs> everything's growing in a driveway. Um, so something like a basil, a really demanding herb, you, you want to have in really good rich soil, sort of thing. But these weed type herbs, weeds that taste good. Uh, this is a great way to uh, grow them and have them close to your house and, and use uh, the edge of a driveway, which, you know, isn't really, usually the edge of a driveway is where your weeds grow, <laughs> or maybe you get ants or something like that. Um, so I found this uh, system to work really well and uh, I've got no complaints about it whatsoever. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, check out my podcast, maritimegrounding.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.